Iowa Catholic Radio now presents the Sunday Mass from the historic Basilica of St. John in Des Moines, Iowa. Good afternoon and welcome to the Basilica of St. John. We extend a special welcome to those praying with us via broadcast. As we prepare for Holy Mass, please turn off all cell phones and electronics. Our celebrant for today's Mass is the Reverend Aquinas M. Nichols, pastor of the Basilica. The attention of this Mass is for Sandra Snyder and family intentions. The Mass will be found in the hymnal supplement, page 27, Mass of New Life. The readings and opening antiphon are in the Sing a New Songbook on page 195. Please stand. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you died and rose that we might live. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you ascended to the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving. For the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before us in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them. So many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they had asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received. With all humanity and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to persevere the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God to mature to manhood to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord.
His Excellency Bishop Johnson has asked for a second collection this weekend to help the tornado victims here in Iowa that suffered so greatly in the recent storms. So the collection tonight will be to help the people that are trying to rebuild their homes and other necessities. <clears throat> this weekend we celebrate this great solemnity of the Lord's Ascension. And this solemnity shows us that our whole person is involved in salvation, which we live by loving others. What is it exactly that we celebrate on this solemnity? Jesus is not sitting on a cloud in the sky hiding from us. The solemnity of the Ascension brings us the good news that our flesh and blood now sit at the right hand of the Father. The Word made flesh enters into God's very life. For those of us with bodies, this is exceptional news. Christian salvation takes place not merely through the salvation of disembodied souls. It is the full human being who is destined to share in the life of God. In the Gospel of St. John, we hear it said, I consecrate myself for them so that they may also be consecrated in the truth. What does this mean? The Greek verb means to make holy or to set apart or to sanctify. Jesus sanctifies himself, body and soul, through the sacrifice of love he offered upon the cross for our salvation. He loves us to the end, shattering the myth that violence and power always win. Jesus reveals upon the cross and in the resurrection from the dead the truth of human existence. That is, that power is powerless before the divine love of God. The Christian must learn to abide in this truth and to dwell in the divine love of the Heavenly Father. Such abiding is not merely abstraction. It is not just thinking about God in the silence of our hearts. It is a bodily abiding. It is a bodily dwelling. It is the love of Christ and his church spilling over into creation. The ascension of Jesus means that Jesus is no longer visibly present before us in the same way that other people are or as he was to his disciples. But rather now, Jesus manifests himself through visible signs. This is through the sacred scriptures where he speaks his word. This is through those we meet. And above all, it is in this Holy Eucharist, when the bread and wine become his very body and blood, given to nourish us on our earthly journey. On this Ascension weekend, let us remember the words from St. John. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. Such words are troubling because we often fail in this command of Christ, which is the basic command he gave us. Love of neighbor, like Christ's own love, is necessarily a love of the whole human being. Too often, we as members of the body of Christ forget this. But we Christians cannot forget this basic principle of our faith. For the Lord who ascended into heaven gave us the example and he still guides us from his heavenly throne. We are called upon to do something about the hungry, the thirsting, the lowly, the abandoned, the unborn, the elderly, the disabled, and those who are suffering. It is a matter of abiding in the love of Jesus. 
Jesus is the Word made flesh, who suffered and died for us, but who rose again from the dead and now has ascended to the right hand of the Father. He has left us bodily and has given us a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. For us, this must be a lifelong task. And one day we hope to go and join Jesus in the house of the Father, where he has gone before us to prepare a place for us in the house of his heavenly Father. To do so, however, we must put into action the commands and the teachings that Christ has given us, so that after our death, he may recognize us as a faithful disciple. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God makes all things new. With confidence in the Father's saving power, we now pray. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the Vicar of Jesus Christ on earth, for our Bishop William, that they will proclaim Christ crucified and risen from the dead, we pray to the Lord. For all migrants, refugees, and displaced persons, that they will be shown the mercy of Christ and be relieved of their afflictions, we pray to the Lord. That as we celebrate this great solemnity of the Lord's ascension, we may keep our eyes fixed on the Son who sits at the right hand of the Father, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to lay down our life and acts of self-donation for others, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the sacred priesthood, the diaconate and religious life, especially for our diocese and from the young of our parish, for the perseverance of our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and the hospitalized, for all those on the Basilica prayer list, we pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, especially the members of our families, our relatives, friends, benefactors, oblates, and deceased parish members, for Frank Colella, who has died, that all these may be blessed to spend eternity in the presence of God the Father, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, your only begotten Son died and rose again and ascended to your right hand in heaven. May his intercession for us bring us one day into the fullness of your kingdom. We ask this as we ask all things through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing our offertory hymn found in the St. Michael's Hymnal, number 445, Be Joyful Mary, 445.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself, from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John, St. Benedict, Pope St. Paul VI, Pope St. John Paul the Great, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Change my morning in 
Please join singing our communion hymn found in the St. Michael's Hymnal, number 422. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, 422.
Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Please join in singing our recessional hymn found in St. Michael's Hymnal, number 753. Sing we triumphant hymns of praise. 753. You've been listening to the Sunday Mass from the Basilica of St. John in Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network.